will be another season of discontent for the NFL as some players grandstand and insult the flag and the anthem once again. And as usual, President Trump had it right from the very beginning. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. And the national left-wing media running their same old plays, this time trying to turn an issue of respect and patriotism into a matter of race and shame on them. As this guy's got in the White House, it's not even a dog whistle, it's a bullhorn. The president has shown every intention of fanning the flames of this culture war because he thinks it benefits him politically. The president has, all, has made clear that the politics of division, he sees that as a winning issue for him. Donald Trump is the classic old man at the bar shouting at the TV. Wow. Another wild day of uh, starts and stops in the Manafort trial. The question that overhangs the proceedings in the Virginia courtroom. Is this a reasonable prosecution or is it raw political persecution? The rocket docket, as it's called, is now looking more like a slow train going off the rails. Judge Janine Pirro joins us tonight. We'll talk about the latest twists and turns in the trial of a man the Department of Justice years ago declined to charge, but whom the special counsel has relentlessly targeted now and who faces the prospect of 300 years in prison as a result. Our top story tonight, the Boston Globe calling for a coordinated media war against President Trump. Just two days after the Thomas Friedman column uh, made a spectacular uh, impact and saying he wants to do the same thing, representing, of course, the New York Times. What's particularly galling about the wolf pack mentality of the national left wing media is uh, they assume that they haven't been colluding all along with their venomous attacks against the president and his family as they work in lockstep with the Dems, the deep state and their henchmen in the Obama Department of Justice and FBI. Which brings us to the Mueller witch hunt, targeting the former Trump campaign chairman in an Arlington, Virginia court for a ninth day, an abbreviated day of testimony in the trial of Paul Manafort. Prosecutors supposed to wrap up their case today, but that won't happen now until Monday. That's because there was a mysterious five-hour delay in the trial today. Judge T.S. Ellis offering no explanation for what had happened or why. So much for the rocket docket. Ellis finally instructing prosecutors to call their first witness in the afternoon, but the jury hadn't quite been brought back to the courtroom yet. Ellis saying, quote, oh yes, I keep forgetting. This follows more whining from prosecutors, the special counsel, uh, a delicate bunch apparently, uh, filing a motion that the judge was once again too hard on the government attorneys, delicate fellows they are, out of line for criticizing the way they questioned a witness yesterday. Ah, judge, you're a patient man. If you have a problem with a judge, who do you call? Well, you call the judge. Judge Janine Pirro joins us now, host of Justice with Judge Janine on the Fox News Channel, author of the number one New York Times bestselling book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, the case against the anti-Trump conspiracy. Great to have you here. Thanks. A mysterious five-hour uh, interregnum in the uh, proceedings in that courtroom, no explanation, and uh, apparently the prosecutors are just a, a little beside themselves at the rough treatment by Judge Ellis. Well, you know, this delay, Lou, for five hours is, is certainly contrary to the rocket docket that uh, Judge T.S. Eliot is running in terms of this court. And I know that as a judge, one of the things that's most important is to move the case along and not be you know, burdened down with motions or whatever they dealt with for five hours. I can only suspect that what they dealt with had to do with one of two things. The crying prosecutors who don't like that the judge is pushing them hard and and calling them uh, babies for tearing up, or there was an issue about the uh, $9.5 million or $16 million loan that Paul Manafort got as a result of, they say, uh, his getting involved in the Trump campaign, and therefore the president of the bank thought, well, I'll give him this $16 million loan, and I need to know if I'm being considered for a position in the Treasury, or I think it was HUD. And I'm saying to myself, everybody who works with someone who works on a presidential campaign, campaign thinks they're up for a cabinet position. What a fool. 
Well, uh, or, uh, you know, perhaps uh, Secretary of the Army. I mean, whatever oh, right, the, right. The, the issue may be, uh, this is a trial that is, is certainly contentious, but most of that contentiousness is between the judge and the special counsel team. Uh, and we're watching, it seems to me, the defense just sort of uh, hold their powder dry right. and wait uh, for their moment uh, rather than even uh, enlarge, if you will, the cross-examination opportunities. Well, think about this. You've got this guy, T.S. Eliot, who runs the rocket docket, all right? He is now trying a case with a special counsel that involves all kinds of additional motions, all kinds of arguments, because we're talking about the special counsel, Mueller, Russia. And this is a tax case where apparently they had looked at it a few years back, didn't think it was worth bringing, and now... Ellis knows he's being used as leverage to convict Paul Manafort so they can squeeze but him not, to go after the president. But not doing a thing about it. After all of his statements at the outset preceding this trial, he declared basically what to me seems to be the reality, right. as you just described, it, using leverage, going after Manafort to get to the president of the United States, summing up in one sentence, really, the judge did, uh, precisely what the special counsel is about, what these attorneys as members of the special counsel represent. A and it's a shame. It Yet what he has done here is absolutely nothing to create equity in that courtroom. Well, it, you know, it, it, there's no equity in the courtroom, and everyone knows that this has nothing to do with Russia the president or anyone else. So right. why are we wasting time in this courtroom with all of these? I call it super due process. When you've got a case where the national media is involved, there's super due process and it takes more and more time. And you know what? Our justice system is so backlogged. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And this judge is frustrated and angry and I don't blame him. Yeah. And uh, with all of that uh, frustration and that anger, uh, one would expect uh, there to be some sort of intercession here on his part. Uh, with those attorneys because uh, he's talked to, to them about they're rolling their eyes. He's talked to them about look, keep putting their heads down. Uh, he's even put up with back talk from, a, from an attorney who I think should have been lifted out of the court by uh, the nape of his neck. Well, look, a, a, a judge, any tough judge who runs his or her courtroom, if someone rolled their eyes at me and the jury caught wind of that, that means that I've lost control of the courtroom. And so this judge cannot be pushed back by the prosecutors uh, who are pushing back and criticizing him. He's got to put his stake in the ground and make sure that they understand you don't cross this line. And that's the only way he's going to be respected by the jury as well as these prosecutors. When the judge said, uh, as he did yesterday, that perhaps he'd been too tough on the prosecutors. Mm. Is that the point at which he lost control of this proceeding? Yeah, I think anybody who's got any common sense says, hmm, I wonder what happened in the back room, who told him what. Very unusual, because here's the thing, Lou, if there is no conviction, the prosecution cannot appeal. So maybe the judge is trying to be very fair, you know, just to get out there and say to the jury, I don't take a position. All he had to do, judge, all you had to do was tell the jury, I take no position on this case. You go into that deliberation room and you you decide the facts based upon the law and the evidence that you heard. And day 10, Monday, in the trial of Paul Manafort. Judge Janine, great to have you here. As always. Here, Thanks so much. Be sure to catch Justice with Judge Janine Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern on the Fox News Channel. President Trump today announcing he will double steel and aluminum tariffs against Turkey, sending Turkey's currencies tumbling nearly 15 percent, down 20 percent at one point. Turkey's stock market plunging 7 percent since the uh, president, President Erdogan, uh, visited the United States and failed to reach an agreement to free American pastor Andrew Brunson from Turkish, uh, a Turkish prison. Uh, the booming Trump economy has been delivering for all Americans, as the president promised. African-American and Hispanic-American unemployment have reached the lowest levels in the history of our country. What do you have to lose? People didn't like it when I said that. What do you have to lose? Guess what? We're right. Some leaders in the black community ignoring progress. We take that up with Ed Rollins and much more straight ahead here. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
former president of the NAACP, Cornell Brooks, ignoring the way President Trump's policies have helped African Americans, all Americans, and instead he wants to call the president a name. Our commander in chief is, in fact, the racial opportunist in chief in this country. He's using race to incite the base, not bearing in mind that his irresponsible presidential rhetoric literally results in racial tensions being exacerbated you know, and literally lives being put at risk. Did he forget that under this president, black unemployment has hit an all time low? He also seems to have overlooked the president's recent, recent approval rates among African Americans. 29% according to the Rasmussen poll, 21% according to the NAACP polling itself. Both numbers, both numbers more than double the number of African American votes that the president received in the election of 2016. And joining me now, top political strategist, Great America PAC, former Reagan White House political director, Fox News political analyst and savant, Ed Rollins, Ed, I mean, that's really extraordinary uh, to see that kind of uh, just that kind of resistance to reality, which is this is a president promised to work for all Americans. He's doing so to great and unprecedented effect. Well, it's, it's limiting the knowledge of, of the constituency group he pretends he's defending. Twenty five percent of African-Americans now are supporting the president. You have to go back to Eisenhower to get a Republican to have those kinds of numbers. The reason they're doing that is he's creating jobs for them. He's lowering that unemployment rate. He's talking about things that matter to them. And I think to a certain extent, that number will even go higher. Well, that number will go higher. And meanwhile, uh, some people are trying to make a racial issue out of uh, the president's objection to disrespect, to insulting uh, the, the national anthem, this flag. Uh, th that represents all of America. Uh, it is it is a peculiar reaction uh, that he's in, uh, that he's getting from but, people who should one think would think uh, be delighted uh, that he is so successful. Well, we're back to the old NFL tricks again, and and uh, you know one of the guys who need last night basically said, well, it's sixty percent of all prisoners in prisons are African-Americans. Like, that's President Trump's fault, or is that the people who've committed crimes? My sense today is this is a president who basically is trying to create jobs, trying to fix the environment for African-Americans and everybody else. Well, the, the, the absolute bald, straightforward fact is he's working on prison reform and doing more than any one of those people on their knees talking uh, big uh, about the president and disrespecting both him and the country. So this is a political strategy. Obviously, the, the Black Caucus is getting more uh, revved up for the elections. They're looking to elect the first black speaker is what they're talking about today uh, uh, with a number of candidates. This meeting is going on all the time. And in order to do that, they have to play the racist card. And the racist card is very un-American and very detrimental to not just this president, but to all Americans. Well, uh, we've, we've seen progress in one area, certainly, at least uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, respect. Suddenly, Mitch McConnell is praising the president, uh, suggesting that Republicans uh, attach themselves to the Trump agenda. And guess what? He now is supporting the president's tough position with China and using tariffs, which he absolutely just didn't think was a great idea a month ago. No one sees more polling data than Senator McConnell. He runs all those Senate uh, campaigns. They all report to him. Uh, he knows what's going on in the country. And my sense when I saw that today, it tells me that the polls are showing that the president's pop more popular every day. His policies are more popular every day. And I think to a certain extent, that's why McConnell's come around. You won't see Speaker Ryan come around, but you basically see McConnell. Why? Think about it. Because Ryan has Ryan has made up his mind. He's he has gonna, no integrity. He has no integrity. He's going to go out, uh, uh, go out to the bitter end, arguing that his uh, his policies are the correct. Taking policies. down the conference, taking down fellow Republicans uh, in the midterm elections. I, I mean, this is one of the most unconscionable uh, figures I've ever seen or read about in the speakership. Uh, it's amazing. That's the members' fault. You're seeing now a whole number of. Democrats who want to get rid of uh, Mrs. Pelosi as a future leader, uh, uh, way bigger numbers than the Republicans have. Uh, and I think to a certain extent, 
he, she's far less harmful to them than, than, uh, than Ryan is to us. So. I want to get back to McConnell okay. because I've got to give the man credit. I give him credit too. Uh, because he is entrenched establishment, uh, orthodox uh, to, uh, to his very bones. And for him to turn in the interest of the party uh, and to embrace uh, what he sees as effective policy, uh, making real changes in the trade relationship uh, with China, and right now, r rising above all of that uh, and acknowledging that the president is right and that we had to do something uh, to correct these imbalances in our trade relationships globally. Mitch McConnell can count votes. Mitch McConnell knows politics as well as anybody. He sees the, what the, the president's doing for his party, and the president's going to hold the Senate for him. Ed Rollins, Thank great you. to see you. My Thanks pleasure. so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. The question is, do you think NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell and the owners understand that if players continue to insult our anthem and our flag, that fans may well abandon the league altogether? Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs tonight. Up next, House Republicans taking new steps to bring deep state actors connected to the well, the Mueller witch hunt and the Trump dossier before Congress. We'll take that up. Fox legal analyst Greg Jarrett joins us right after this quick break. Stay with us. A lot of noise today about former uh, White House uh, aide uh, uh, Amoroso's new book. We'll uh, spare you the details, uh, but... We will share with you the White House response, their statement reading in part, quote, it's sad that a disgruntled former White House employee is trying to profit off these false attacks and even worse, that the media would now give her a platform after not taking her seriously <laughs> when she had only positive things to say about the president during her time in the administration. And I think that is uh, right to the point. We may finally be seeing some of the deep state uh, Actors, at least the key actors among them, linked to the discredited Trump dossier, testify before Congress. Bob Goodlot, who hasn't done much as chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, is now preparing subpoenas for the Department of Justice's Bruce Orr, his wife Nellie Orr, and Fusion GPS co-founder Glenn Simpson. And joining us tonight, Greg Jarrett, Fox legal analyst and author of the Russia hoax, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton and frame Donald Trump. And I'm pleased to tell you that tonight that book becomes the number one New York Times bestseller as of Sunday this weekend. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's terrific. And by the way, we, this is uh, the only show uh, that I'm aware of that's ever had on the same night two number one bestsellers <laughs> contemporaneously. So, And you said you liked the book. I absolutely okay, said I liked you. the book. And I was absolutely <laughs> serious. Thank you. And that's why it's number one. It's very simple. I'm it sure. would not be if I had not said that. But for you, it would have there been number go. 2,000. Well, who knows? I, I don't know if there are numbers that big. <laughs> but anyway, it's great to see you here. And, and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, good luck. Uh, ready? You know, this, this business... I have to tell you, I am frustrated. I know you are. You have to be. I think right. all of us are frustrated. We keep here, you know, we keep reporting details and, and perspectives and, uh, you know, certain elementary uh, new uh, details. But the fact is, we know the story and we've known the story, mm -hmm. the basic fundamental story of this witch hunt uh, for, for over a year now. And Congress is moving at a glacial uh, pace uh, we have uh, we have a subpoena power, and I think, by the way, that should be changed. This show should be the first television show with subpoena <laughs> power. Uh, I think that would be helpful. Yes. But we are, you know, it, it just becomes very frustrating. And, and, and subpoenaing uh, people who are uh, British citizens uh, with little prospect that they'll show up. That's right. Uh, what is the point of this? The show is uh, must go on, I understand. But also, shouldn't there be some results by now? Well, Glenn Simpson has already testified a couple of times, the uh, founder of Fusion GPS, mm -hmm. who was the one who uh, hired Christopher Steele. So there's this conspiratory cabal of Steele, Simpson, and Bruce and Nellie Orr. And these are the four people who really drove the hoax through a document that was totally fabricated called the dossier. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and they were peddling this to everybody who would listen to media. You, you, left out, you left out something very important here. What's that? The cabal was enforced, enabled, and empowered by the Hillary Clinton campaign oh, sure. and the Democratic National Committee. And, and those are very powerful actors to, to uh, include. Not only was Christopher Steele on the payroll of Hillary Clinton, he was on the payroll of the FBI, 11 different payments. And his hiring by the FBI actually began seven months before the Trump-Russia collusion probe was officially launched. It looks to me like he was already spying months in advance. And as we retrace ground, the reality is we don't have any sense that we are closer to seeing what is going to be the fate of the toxic, corrupt leadership of the FBI under the Obama administration, the toxic, corrupt leadership of the intelligence community, particularly those who led the FBI, the CIA. Sure. Uh, this is... And the NDI, the, the DNI himself, Clapper. Right. So where is Congress and why can they not muster the will and the force to, to actually follow the Constitution and insist upon its enforcement against that corrupt Justice Department leadership and corrupt FBI leadership? Congress has always been slow and ineffective when it comes to investigations. Uh, they're not, frankly, a competent body to do it. Um, and it's troublesome that the Department of Justice, which is supposed to be the competent body, is run by incompetence and corrupt people. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Jeff Sessions, uh, just somebody who's completely feckless and useless. Uh, Rod Rosenstein really runs it, but he, I believe, is covering up his own wrongdoing. Uh, he signed off on the renewal of the FISA warrant without proper evidence. We, we are quickly moving to the point that the president has to take responsibility here for his own Justice Department, his own FBI. Mm -hmm. And he has the power, as he, dis as he said he would, yes. to, be, uh, to author the most transparent, most open administration. These documents have to be declassified, right. and this witch hunt has to be nullified now. And, I, you know, I've said it repeatedly that the president needs to declassify three sets of documents, the origins of the Trump-Russia collusion case, which would show it was a complete fraud and that they were framing him without evidence. Uh, the second is the so-called uh, group of eight documents. But the most important documents of all are the heavily redacted 21 pages of the FISA warrant application that would demonstrate that a fraud was perpetrated on the court that the judges were deceived and evidence concealed. And uh, right now, we have a, a special counsel that continues despite the fact there is no crime. Right. There's no speci uh, uh, specification of a crime. Uh, there is, uh, it, it is bewildering that with all the conflicts that attend, uh, Robert Mueller as the special counsel, his appointment, uh, his acceptance of the job, uh, that we have a special counsel investigation at all. That's right. Not only was his appointment illegitimate because the law requires, the regulations require a stated crime, uh, this is an investigation in search of a crime. But even worse than that, the launching by the FBI in July of 2016 of the investigation into Trump was in clear, direct violation of FBI regulations. Comey knew it. Comey didn't care. He was relying... Neither did the entire leadership of the FBI under President Obama. They're no longer there. That's correct. As a result. At least that has occurred. But we don't have consequences. And there isn't, uh, in, at least as far as I can determine, uh, any consequence in law uh, that is punishment uh, for what the, has uh, transpired. Uh, we're we're going to continue this uh, because, to me, the, the hammer is now right. down. It has to be resolved because uh, we, we can't continue these uh, year-long uh, uh, soirees where uh, everybody is uh, discussing the facts and understand the facts, but nothing happens. And, the, and particularly on Capitol Hill, where not a single, single U.S. senator has called out uh, this uh, Robert Mueller. But this is how cover-ups work. The facts are slow to emerge. Yeah, well, we've got more facts than we have action, and we seem to have a lot more talkers than we do <laughs> doers. Right. Greg Jarrett.
Great to have you with Lou, us. Lou, thanks so much. And again, congratulations. Come Sunday, number one, New York Times bestseller. Feels pretty Excellent. good. Yeah, it should. Wildfires continue to wreak havoc in California. The holy fire burning south of Los Angeles, destroying a dozen structures, threatening nearby homes, and the fire allegedly started by an arsonist Monday, burning more than 18,000 acres so far. It's 5%. 5% contained. Up next, it seems the NFL doesn't learn quickly. Fans are in, it appears, for another year of grandstanding. The NFL is in a very bad box. You cannot have people disrespecting our national anthem, our flag, our country, and that's what they're doing. And in my opinion, the NFL has to change. Or you know what's going to happen? Their business is going to go to hell. We take all of that up right after this quick break. Stay with us. President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh, now have a start date. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley says they began September 4th, teeing up Republicans to have Kavanaugh seated before the Supreme Court's new term begins in early October. Joining us tonight, Chris Farrell, Director of Investigations and Research for Judicial Watch. And it is great to have you with us, Chris. Uh, let's start first with uh, what is going on with the good lot, the Judiciary Committee now. Uh, saying that he has to have the Steele dossier, he's subpoenaing it. Uh, uh, Bruce Orr, Nelly, uh, or his wife, Fusion GPS co-founder Glenn Simpson. Uh, where are we headed here, and how likely is it that uh, that subpoena will uh, win out? Well, better late than never. I'm glad that he's doing it, because I think it's a critical piece of information that the public has got to have access to. Um, we're already suing. In fact, we sued... Right. to get a hold of the or GPS steel uh, communications. Of course, we had filed those requests literally months ago in order to sort of uh, exhaust the administrative process mm -hmm. so that it was ripe for litigation. So, uh, you know, he can issue a subpoena and act quickly, which is great, and he should. Uh, we were kind of ahead of him in the hopes that we would, uh, you know, get it through the legal process. <clears throat> but look, as long as the information gets out, that's the important thing. Well, it's, it's nice that you have that kind of confidence that that's going to succeed. Do you really have that kind of confidence? And if you do feel confidence, high, medium, low confidence? Uh, I think based on Judicial Watch's track record, it's quite high. Now, there'll, there'll probably be some No, I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the Judiciary Committee subpoenas. Yeah, well, uh, they've been in a straight uphill battle, and they've had to pull teeth to get anything. Uh, so I expect more gamesmanship. I mean, uh, but I'm glad that they're asking. I'm glad, glad that they're exercising their constitutional authority, can, and they should be answered. Can I There's answer, no reason not to. Why isn't there any interest, apparently, on the part of any one of these committees, in the House particularly? Uh, the Senate is a complete waste of time. Total. Uh, but why isn't there any interest in how... Uh, that money was moved from the DNC, millions of dollars, and from the Hillary campaign, millions right. of dollars, uh, into support for the creation of the phony dossier. And what was the role and relationship between the, F, uh, the FBI and uh, the Orrs, uh, the Strzoks, all of them, uh, and the creation of the uh, FISA uh, warrants? I mean, we, the, there has been no discussion of investigation on that basis at all. And those are two principal, the principal actors here, because they were funding all that transpired. That is the DNC and the Clinton campaign. And the bitter irony uh, and the, the, the signal that this is such a political witch hunt that it's insane is that if Mr. Mueller was looking anywhere... What you just described is precisely what he should be looking at. There's the conspiracy. There's the Russian collusion right there. What you just, you know, enumerated those connections. But why those isn't persons. anybody focusing on it? That's what is, drives me nuts. And it should drive you nuts. Uh, frankly, you know, leaving out the, the leadership, which is uh, there That's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's just a waste issue. of time even discussing them. Yeah. But but let's put it this way. The Freedom Caucus, every single one of those members should be screaming every day for the shift to be made to looking at yeah. the whole lineup of the cast of characters and all the actions and behaviors that you just detailed seconds ago. And uh, 
you know, at this point, we're it's 2018. Uh, we're in August, and the beat goes on. The this Kabuki theater that is called an investigation on Capitol Hill. Uh, only one committee with real, in my opinion, uh, real significant contributions. That's the House Intelligence Committee. Correct. There is no way in the world that this thing can be brought to resolution unless the president intercedes uh, himself personally to assure openness and transparency uh, and end this nonsense. Uh, the answer, and I've said it a hundred times before, it's extreme transparency. The president, with a stroke of a pen, can cut loose a lot of this information and say, look, you want to know what all the big secrets are? You want to know the grand conspiracy? Here, American public, these are the records and documents that we have. Take a look at it for yourself. And you tell me where the big Russian boogeyman is in this, in this saga. And if you, if you look hard enough, you find it in the Hillary Clinton campaign, the DNC, uh, Fusion GPS. That's where it all resides. There's nothing to do with you know, uh, you know, to that point, uh, I, I have long believed that if there is any evidence of the Russian disinformation campaign, psychological warfare against this country, yep. it is best represented in the behavior of the Democrats uh, who have done everything they can to try to subvert a legitimately elected president of the United States. They indeed are truly uh, in collusion in the interest of Russia. It is the very definition of, sub, of subversion. It really is. Chris Farrell, always good to see you. Come back soon. Thanks, Quick, Lou. Quickly, quickly. Thanks, Chris. Chris Farrell. Up next, NFL players back at it, insulting the national anthem in the very first week of the preseason's first game. We take that up, our panel.